What is Jesus' relationship to God and man? Well, in a few moments or a few minutes to just quickly explain this profound truth, um, I should have no trouble with that, especially since over the centuries thousands and thousands of words, even thousands of books have been written on it. Ah. First let me say this, that the disciples at first did not understand or know him any, as anything else other than Jesus. And they called him Rabbi, Teacher. They called him Master, especially in and around Jerusalem. Um, they didn't talk about him or experience him as the Christ or as the Son of God. In fact, in, in terms of the evidence from the texts that we have in the Gospels and the Acts of the Apostles, it appears that the word Son of God, huios to Theo, Son of God, was only applied to Jesus in chapter 9 of Acts of the Apostles, some three, four years after the resurrection. And when Paul comes on the scene. And it, it may be that Paul was the first person to employ that term. In, in the earlier um, chapters of the Acts of the Apostles, when Peter is preaching his first sermons, he describes Jesus as the Holy One of God or the Servant of God. And here in these sermons, it would have been an ideal time to describe him as who he is to the Son of God. And he didn't. He talked about him as the Messiah. He talked about him as the Holy One of God. He talked about him as the Servant of God. And so, we see the notion, concept, idea of the Son of God as a doctrinal development that occurred later and expressed a profound experience of those disciples as they experienced the risen Christ in their own personal spiritual lives year after year. Paul used this expression to describe Christ after he got a two by four beside the head on the road to Damascus. Jesus says to him, why are you persecuting me? It's really hard for you to kick against the goad. And Paul says, who are you, Lord? And Jesus says, I am Jesus who you persecute. And Paul said, oh shoot. And it is that experience that Paul describes when he has to come up with a term that describes that experience. He comes up with the term who has to feel. That's how we understand that, that term. And the idea, the, the idea of son of God um, in, the, in the Greek world was totally acceptable. After all, the gods came down and played around, slept around, and generally had a fun time leaving all kinds of children behind. That was, that was commonplace for the Greek thought, mode of thinking. But for the Jew, this was utterly, totally impossible to conceptualize, think of, or have any, any sympathy for that kind of thinking. It is beyond their idea of the nature of what they talked about as, as God. And so, when you think in terms of who was he and what was his relationship to God, the temptation to either assert the old doctrine of he was the son of God. Quite honestly, I don't know what that means. I have three children, two sons. <laughs> 
neither of them will do what I tell them. But by one at moment in time, they are the product of me, my, my son, whom I love greatly. And I think that we try to illustrate in using this term, Son of God, that relationship which people sense between the Father and Jesus the Christ. That way in which God valued this person, Jesus the Christ. And the way in which Jesus gave himself utterly to the will of God, the calling of God in that special relationship he had, in a special task that he'd been set. This is where those terms come from. Now, in modern terms, the notion Son of God means absolutely nothing to people today. And I think, you know, maybe we need to just see it as historical reference. Now, Jesus is the Christ. It's a different matter. The Jewish people, and don't forget, he was a Jew, surrounded by Jews, and he spoke Jewish to Jewish people. They understood and knew what they thought was the, about the Christ. But their expectations, again, were not his expectations. But eventually... His disciples saw him very much as that Christ and who was ushering in not the kingdom everybody had expected, but a totally different kingdom. One that far exceeded the hopes or vision of any of them. And they just gave it the nerve. They called it the good news. They called it the gospel. Good news. This was the kingdom of heaven, and it wasn't a place on this earth. Until there are all kinds of ways in which their thinking evolved and developed, and we have to understand that in order to understand what is behind these sim symbols, these words, the Christ, Son of God. There's a lot more to say, but...